Hey guys, Mr. B here again, bringing you another awesome math video. Um, so we are currently working on um, related rates in class. So if you guys could pop open that unit five, lesson five, lesson to where we left off last day. And we're going to um, give this question a shot and a few, uh, two other ones. And if any point, um, you know, you're not sure you understand or you need to go back, just press pause. Go back and look at the video, or you can, if the, you know, you're watching this together as a class, just uh, someone take the effort, raise your hand, press pause, and go back through. All right, so we're doing related rates, and basically what related rates are is a measure of how something is changing, just like we talked about in class, like a velocity changes, things like that. So again, these are derivatives. That's all derivatives are, rates of change, like slope, change in y over change in x. That's all they are. So with these related rates, similar optimization, the key is figuring out what the equation you're going to use, then you can go forward from that. So let me read the question. So it says, air is being pumped into a spherical balloon so that its volume, so there's the hint, its volume increases at a rate of 100 cubic centimeters per second. How fast is the radius of the balloon increasing when the diameter is 50. So first of all, we have a sphere. And the volume of a sphere is, and you might be saying, well, I don't know it. How would I know it? Well, a lot of oftentimes you'd be given it if it was an assessment. So 4 over 3 pi r cubed. You might hear a baby crying in the background. That's why I'm home. Um, so volume equals 4 over 3 pi r cubed. So um, you're given a couple more pieces of information. So it says the volume increases at a rate of 100 cubic centimeters per second. So that's a rate of change of volume. So that is for our given information that is dV over dt. So change in volume over change in time. That's all dV means, change in, sort of like delta, the triangle we use in math or in physics. And that's 100 cubic centimeters per second. And we would expect that to be positive because it's getting filled with air, so it's growing. How fast is the how fast is the radius of the balloon increasing? So that's what we're looking for. dr over dt is our question mark. And then we're given a moment in time, all right, when it is 50 centimeters. So it gives us that particular moment in time, um, and that's the diameter, so the radius would be 25. It gives us that particular moment in time because as this thing um, gets bigger, the, ra the rate of change of the radius is changing as well. So, like, it's, you know, it's a complex situation, so it has to give us a moment in time so we can figure that out. So, in contrasting that with the Pythagorean theorem example that we did, the ladder was fixed, so those things are different. The ladder was six throughout, whereas this radius is only 25 centimeters once, and that's for one second or whatever it might be. So you got to sort of, when you're doing these questions, is this fixed or is it a one-time thing? And that's important. So a one-time thing, like this R equals 25, this goes into the derivative only, all right? So this is going to go into the derivative and I'm not going to spell it out there, but um, if it's fixed, it can go into the original equation, all right? And sometimes we'll have something fixed if we have too many variables that we've got to kind of account for, and we'll talk with that in another example. So let's go ahead, take the derivative of this guy. The thing to keep in mind is that they are all implicit derivatives. So I go, the derivative of v is dv over dt. So like we talked about, not that much different than v prime. It's just that notation changes based on the fact that it's with respect to time. Prime is reserved for x with respect to x. And then we got this 4 over 3 pi. Well, that's just a constant or a coefficient. So I'm going to leave that there. Not a constant, coefficient. And then I'm going to use the power rule on this r cubed. So that becomes 3 r squared. So that 3 pops off, goes down in front, multiplies the r in front, and then I subtract 1 off the exponent to get 3 r squared. So now I try to simplify that as much as I possibly can. Well, actually, I almost forgot. 
every time you take the derivative of something, you need to make sure you put in your implicit part. So this guy gets a dr over dt. I took derivative with respect to time of r, so I need to put that dr over dt in. For now, you're saying, why do I need to put it in there? Probably it's because of the chain rule, but just accept it. It goes there. I know that's not always the answer you want, but we can talk more about the philosophic theory of it when we get when I get back. Um, so now I'm just going to tidy this guy up a little bit. And, um, you know, the only real thing that can happen here is I can cancel this 3 and this 3 because it's divided by 3 and times by 3. So I end up with um, 4 pi r squared times dr over dt. All right. So now I've got the derivative simplified as much as I possibly can. And I've basically got everything I need over here. I've got my dv over dt. That's 100, so I can fill that in. So I put 100 right there. Then I rewrite my 4 pi. And I've got my r squared, which is 25 squared. And then I'm trying to find that dr over dt. So there's a couple different ways you can go about doing this. And I'm going to put you guys in sort of a mental math situation now. Like this is a perfect mental math question where you don't have to use a calculator. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to divide both sides. I'm not going to multiply this out or anything. I'm just going to divide both sides by the 4 pi 25 squared. And the reason why I'm doing that is I want to get dr over dt by itself. So I can do that. And when we're doing mental math, we don't worry about pi. We're just going to leave it sort of dragging along with our calculation. So I got this 100 over 4 pi 25 squared. So there's a couple different ways you can mental math this. And when we're doing mental math, we want to avoid doing big calculations like six, like uh, 25 squared is 625. We don't want to do that. So what I want, what I like to do is break stuff down so that I can get things to cancel out. For example, I know I have a 4 here, and I know I have a 20, I have 225, so 25 times 25. So I could rewrite 100 as 4 times 25, and that way I don't have to spend all this time trying to figure out what 4 times 625 is, and then figuring out after what I do with that. So now, when I break that 100 into 4 times 25, something really nice happens. So the 4 cancels like that. Then I can cancel a 25 and a, tw and a squared. And then I end up with 1 over 25 pi. And that answer is perfectly acceptable to, to list. Now, if you didn't like that, and you're on a test, you can certainly break it into a decimal. But that is perfectly fine to leave for a long answer on a CPT or for uh, a unit test or an assignment. And that would be the units for that. So our radius is in centimeters and time is in seconds. So that's what we end up with. 1 over 25 pi centimeters per second. All right, so that's our first example. So I'll stop the video there and um, I'll do another one for the next example.